Greetings. This is my second attempt at this video. The first one didn't work. So as you can see, the professionalism continues. As you can also see, we're in an uproar here in, in Green Yamo Studios. Uh, we're moving to hopefully a more professional location. So bear with the low quality of this video. I'm sure compared to my other videos that you've been watching, uh, this one's going to be much worse, if that's possible. Also, you notice that I'm actually in front of the camera for the first time. Not that I was specifically making it a point to be behind the camera all the time, so the videos I was making tended to be more instructional type of things, so the overhead view was better. But now that I'm retired, I can get in front of the camera because, you know, who cares? This video is actually in response to a viewer, Pops McCarthy, who requested that I make a Glock cleaning video. My response to him was a little bit, well, one, I'm surprised that actually anyone actually watches my videos, and two, that actually people want to comment on my videos. That's, I actually find that flattering. His request was that I make a Glock cleaning video, and I think my initial wise-ass answer was, well, uh, you know, I think the only thing more prevalent on YouTube than Glock cleaning videos are cat videos. But then I got an idea, and I even, I even said it in my response to him. I might have a twist on it, and my particular twist is going to be, as a retired member of the New York City Police Department, I did over 28 years in that department, I figured, why not make a Glock cleaning video how the NYPD trained us to clean our Glock 19s? Okay, why not? At least it should be entertaining for some people. Um, now listen, disclaimer going in. This is how we were trained to do it by the New York City Police Department that in no way is meant to imply that this is the best way to do it. I don't clean my guns this way. This is how they trained us, so I'm going to impart this information to you. The NYPD, if nothing else, will always pick the safest or at least the course of action that will leave you open to the least amount of civil liability. So if their, their department gunsmiths and lawyers and, and politicians decided that this is how you should clean this gun, you could at least know that you'll be safe from any kind of lawsuits, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to have some props with this. Um, prop number one is going to be my original gun cleaning kit, as you can tell by the condition of it. I was issued this in 1990. And I'm also going to have another prop, because aside from cleaning this gun, which I'm, only, I'm really going to pant them on most of it because I think we only had to clean guns, I'm going to take you on an imaginary day at the range or at least portion of the range. You can see a lot of my gun belt is empty. Okay, so imagine you just did your, your biannual qualification cycle. And you, the gun, Jesus Christ, the gun is empty. And you're out there and you're going pew, 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 and you fire your last round and the slide locks to the rear. You would stand there drop your magazine, and you'd stand there in position three, waiting for everybody else to finish up their cycle. When that was done, the tower would give you instructions. Rack the slide to the rear three times. Lock it to the rear. Do a visual and physical inspection of your chamber. When you are confident that when you are uh, confident that that chamber is empty, with the slide locked to the rear, holster the firearm with the slide locked to the rear. You'd police up all your magazines, we clean up all the brass, we get all our crap, we go to gun cleaning. Gun cleaning was in Building 10. Building 10 was basically a trailer. Uh, they had a whole bunch of them all over, the, all over the, the outdoor range in City Island in the Bronx. Building 10, trailer number 10 was gun cleaning. Once you got online, you got into gun cleaning, you had all, they would take all your live ammo from you, put it in a numbered locker. You would find a position somewhere at one of the cleaning tables. Then they would direct you all at once as a unit. About maybe 30, 40 guys in there. Draw your service pistol, point it in a safe direction. And they would say, for all purposes, a safe direction is straight up. We were in a trail. There was nothing above us but birds. Rack the slide again, three times to the rear. Lock it open. Do another visual, physical and visual inspection. When you are confident that that chamber is empty, let your slide come forward. Then they would go further and say, Glocks only. Pull the trigger. We'd all do that. Click, 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 click. And when I say Glocks only, there'd be other firearms in there. Uh, at the time, at least when I just left the job, the NYPD officers had three choices. Now it's four, but I don't really count it. Three choices. One was the Glock 19, the other was a SIG P226, the double action only version, and the other was a Smith & Wesson 9mm. Nine nine it was like a 5.9, whatever fucking model number that was. I don't know. I chose the Glock not because I knew anything about Glocks in 1994 when I transitioned. I carried a revolver from 90, 1990 to 1994. 
I didn't know anything about this gun. I just knew that it was the cheapest. They were selling us this gun for $380 with the night sights. The SIG was upwards of $800. The Smith was somewhere in the middle. So it was my winner. Anyway, I digress. Uh, click, 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 click. Then we break down our Glocks. Again, it's a Glock cleaning video. So if anybody doesn't know, open the back strap, pull that down, slide to the rear, pull the trigger, thing comes off. You break down your pistol to its component parts. This is how they taught us to do it. We would take our Hoppies number nine, which was issued to us. We would take our wire brush, dunk that in the Hoppies. We would run that down the bore. That's what we got, we run it down the bore. And then we'd let that sit. We'd take our toothbrush that came with the kit, put some Hoppies on that, feed ramp all over. Same thing with your slide. Aim down so none of the crap gets in your, your striker chamber. Brush, 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 brush. Get it all nice and gooey. I would always put it this way so the shit drained down towards the front. Same thing with this. Get everything out of it, brush it, let the solvent sit on, let the solvent do its work, give it a few minutes, then we get to the cleaning portion. The cleaning portion would be, you would either get some patches, or no one wants to use their patches, just a rag or something like that. Get, the, get as best you can with the rag. Then you use the patches to get the fine points. This is, you know, all, all standard stuff. Same thing. Uh, they don't let us use, uh, if you're wondering, they, know, they don't let you use aerosol cleaners or any aerosol products in the NYPD. I forgot the reason they gave us. I'm sure it was some lawyer reason. I would sometimes bring compressed air. Uh, they let me use that, but I can't speak for now. Maybe that policy has changed. Then, you get through your barrel. They didn't have us use these. Well, they didn't specifically tell us not to. How they trained us was to get the plug end. The plug end. You get your patches, put them on the plug, run it through, keep running it through until it comes out fairly clean or clean enough for your satisfaction. Then you'd have your gun ready to go back together. We'd get to our oiling points. This is my original oil that was issued to me in 1990. It shows you how much, how little oil you really have to use. Our oiling points that they taught us on this particular firearm were put a drop of oil on your fingers, coat the, coat, coat the barrel. Then you assemble your fire, you assemble your upper. Let's see if I can do this without looking like an idiot. Assemble your upper. That's done. There were five oiling points on here. One, two, three, four slide rails, and one right there on that bar. Just a drop of oil. You reassemble, work it in to your satisfaction, get a nice clean cloth, wipe down the outside of it, you're good to go. Okay? Then you can actually holster it like this. Sometimes they would have you actually lock it to the rear again and holster it like that. When you're all done, you put your stuff away, you pick up your live ammunition, put it in your bag, go back out probably to Charlie Range, where again, they would have 40 of us all lined up in a row. And this is again, you, you did this firearm that we were trusted to carry around in our personal lives. For, for when you were at the outdoor range, it was treated like a live hand grenade. They had you walk, and there was good reason for it. Uh, large departments like the NYPD, it's the lowest common denominator factor. Uh, the whole range is only as safe as the biggest moron that they hired, and they hired some morons. So we go out to that line, and they march us out there, and then they say, okay, you know, draw your service pistol. You can keep it at position three, just point it down range. Insert a full magazine. Strip a round off. Holster. Back that magazine out while it's in the holster. Top it off. Put it back in while it's in the holster. Tap and tug, it's secure. Now you load it for the street. 15 plus one, load it for the street. You know the magazine should already be in your pouches. You load them at your convenience. That's it. You qualified, you're good for another six months. And that's how it worked. Um, I don't know if this video helped anybody. I really shouldn't help anybody. I don't think this is the best way to clean a gun. Uh, maybe it was uh, nostalgic for some guys who retired before me. Maybe it was just silly. Maybe it was just a glimpse into uh, New York City Police Department. If people are interested in that, fine, more power to you. I will say before I sign off that I had some questions about this friggin' holster. Uh, and that. This holster, by the way, this, this, uh, this is only issued to me last year. This is a new super retention holster. 
uh, that basically the only thing more secure than this is if you actually have to enter a four digit pin number to get your fucking gun out. This ensures that no one's gonna get this gun away from you, but it's pretty much going to ensure that in a quick draw, oh my God situation, you're burying a cop. I could say that now, but politicians and lawyers. In any case, uh, I had a question about the um, the New York One, New York Two trigger. I did a couple of videos about some options on my on my 26 and my 19 as to what I was going to do. You can't really see it, but if you look really close, you'll see it's got that olive drab green. This I'm I'm running this now that I'm retired. This is a New York One trigger with a Ghost connector uh, in here. So. I think it's the best combination. The New York 2 combination like that was a little too heavy, and the stock trigger with this connector was just too light. We always used to bitch about how the, the, the lawyer triggers that they came with all of our guns, whether they were revolvers or semi-autos, is just so heavy and so awful, and I've complained about it in previous videos. But after almost 30 years of it, you kind of become institutionalized. Anything else is just too light. Civilian triggers are too light for me. This one, for my purposes, is just about right. I don't know what it breaks out. It's probably breaking at about eight pounds, which might seem heavy. There's a lot of guys like five pounds, six pound triggers. For some of my experience, eight pounds feels light to me and it's what I'm used to. So I actually kind of like the feel of this gun. I shoot very well with it now. Uh, well, that's about it. Uh, questions and comments, leave them in the appropriate box. Uh, if you like it, you don't like it, that's fine. I'll try and make more video with better content. I'm still trying to find the way where I can actually shoot on camera. It's very difficult in the, in the New York City area. Uh, but if I can do that, I'll do that. If I have anything more, if I have any new gun purchases, any more reviews that I can, any more accessories uh, reviews that I can give you, I'll do that too. So uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, I'm going to finish this professionally by actually leaning forward and shutting off the camera now. So have a good day.